So we've seen that uh, Kafka is extremely flexible in the way that we can add consumers. And in fact, um, you know, I showed you that uh, by in, in the demo, I showed you how I was able to add another consumer to the group just dynamically. And I was even add, able to uh, add a completely new consumer um, consuming from the same topic. What you notice is it didn't require any form of reconfiguration on the producer side. And that's the important thing. It divides the production side from the consumption side, which means that you don't have to keep adding more agents to your producers to forward logs into um, new services. So that's great. But one of the things you might be wondering is, well, that's, that's all well and good, but this isn't very secure. So in fact, although I, I didn't, I haven't implemented the um, security side, you can have a very sophisticated um, security mechanism uh, on the producer and consumer side. And uh, one way is to uh, use client side certificates. Similarly, the messages that flow between the producer and node and the node and the consumer can be encrypted um, using TLS. So I've uh, done some tracing, which we're going to look at next. I haven't got encryption enabled. Obviously, it would be a bit difficult for me to explain what was going on if I had, um, but um, you certainly can do that. So here's a trace that um, I have taken at an earlier time. I just produced two messages into the topic, one MSG1 and MSG2. And finding those messages is fairly simple. If I just do a find command for a string uh, within the packet bytes, it must be within the packet bytes, and I can look for the string msg1. And you can see that I have this Kafka produce message. Now to make things a bit easier for us to understand, I'm going to uh, filter this down a little. So the first thing is I'm just going to look at TCP ports 9092 because that's where the uh, the Kafka broker is sitting. I'm going to filter it down um, a bit further to eliminate the um, TCP control me uh, messages. Uh, I can just type correctly. So I want TCP greater than one, but actually I do want to see the SYN packet. So I'm going to have to uh, add an additional expression here. Okay. So here's our, um, our TCP produce. Um, I'm using transom here, so you can see that uh, that completed in eight milliseconds. You can see that we get these repeated fetch me messages. Um, so we're getting them all the way through and you can see that they, they seem to repeat every 500 milliseconds. Now the reason for that is that the fetch mechanism works on a long pole basis. Um, although the pole isn't very long, it's only 500 milliseconds. But basically the consumer is uh, issuing this Kafka fetch um, with a uh, an implied or a configured 500 millisecond timeout and if um, there is nothing to return then the Kafka broker sends back a response saying there's nothing to return and then the consumer immediately issues another fetch and you see this over and over again. So you see fetch, response, immediate fetch again. So that's how that bit's working. So if we go back a bit and let's look for our Whoops, let's look for our message again. So here we see the message being produced. We see the response coming back to acknowledge the fact the message is now sitting on the topic queue. And then we see a response to an earlier fetch. So it will be uh, to this fetch just here. Just so happens that it's satis been satisfied about 100 milliseconds sooner than it would have otherwise timed out and you can see that the fetch actually gets message one. So we've got the production, we've got an earlier fetch from the consumer, then the uh, producer produces the message one onto the topic queue, the um, broker then sees that and immediately sends the message out on that outstanding fetch command. So I hope that's fairly straightforward. Um, there's um, 
lots of information in the headers of the uh, produce and fetch. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much, but the good thing is that um, Wireshark 2.6.4 and onwards does support the Kafka protocol, so it does have a decode. Now the Kafka broker produces a log which has some useful information in it. So this is the log, uh, a snippet of log for um, the 19th of December when I was actually um, doing this experiment. Um, if I look for uh, Kafka config, what this does is it, it shows you the running config. I think this is output at the time the broker is started. So if you have doubts about the configuration parameters, you can certainly pull them out of um, the log if you've got a log covering the time when the service was started. So that's the first thing. Let's take a look at the uh, log for um, my Kafka server. So on my server, um, the logs rotate every hour. Uh, I think that's the default uh, uh, from a default installation. Um, so it's the server log we're interested in, not the uh, state change log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grep for the term preparing balance, rebalance um, in the 2200 hour log for the 19th of December. And you can see I've got two entries, one at 22 0155 that says, if you look at the wording, it says reason adding new member to the consumer group. So let's look at that time in the network trace. So we go back into here. So it's 22.0155.984. 22.0155.98. And it's around this time here, 980.982, etc. And you can see this is at the point where the uh, consumer is connecting to the topic and joining the consumer group. So the reason I wanted to point this out was because this is a way that you can correlate entries in the network trace with entries in the log. So if you had, for, for example, a failure with the connection, then you'd be able to uh, look in the log for details of the failure and then go to the um, network trace and find the entry. Similarly, if we have a look at 22.02.23.857, Oh two twenty three eight five seven. You can see we have this entry here, Kafka leave group, and this is the point obviously where the consumer is leaving the group. So that might be useful um, to just to be able to tie those two, two things up. The Kafka protocol is uh, documented here, and as I said earlier, it is uh, decoded successfully by Wireshark two six four and later. And what you're looking for is produce messages that put the messages onto the topic queue and fetch messages that listen and then get the message from the topic queue on a long pole basis with a default timeout of 500 milliseconds. One further piece of information is that the Kafka broker can actually produce a log of the running keys that are used in TLS and that log can be uh, imported into Wireshark to enable you to decrypt the TLS traffic for encrypted Kafka traffic. Of course, to do this, you would require um, permission of the application owner um, to make sure that uh, they're quite happy with you uh, uh, viewing the data. So just bear that in mind. Okay, I think that's everything. Thanks very much, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you on another topic soon.